Welcome to the first screencast for WPThemeTutorial.com. Today we're going to go over using Beanstalk to automatically deploy our WordPress projects. You can see I've already set my repository up inside Beanstalk and I've done two commits. I've committed my git ignore file and then I've committed my entire WP content directory which excludes the uploads folder. Now we're going to go to terminal and you can see that I only have the master branch for my project. So the first thing that we're going to do is break out the development branch for the project. You can see I've obviously already updated a Kismet in here. So let's commit the uh, Kismet updates immediately. You can see that I have updated them and I now have two branches. I have my development and my master. Since we're talking about automated deployment with Beanstalk, I'm going to break out the deployment branch for my development environment. So you can see I now have three branches. I have my deployment branch for my development environment, I have my development branch, and I have my master. You can obviously rename your deployment branch to whatever you want. I just simply like dep dev or dep live for a live environment because the dep is shorter to type than deployment. So now that we have that, the first thing I want to do is push all of my branches to Beanstalk. So I'm going to do git push bean, bean is the name of my repository, and I do dash dash all. Now we have all of our branches pushed to Beanstalk. You can see here that we now have the Akismet updates pushed to there, and if we go to our branches, you can see that we have three branches listed. but we do not have any of our deployment environments. So let's set up an environment to deploy to. First thing we want to do is name this. I'm going to name this being test dev. I'm going to make it automatic and I am going to leave the label color exactly the same and I want to push on my development branch and I can add my environment. I want to use SFTP for my server. I'm going to name the server. The repository path will be the root because I want it to deploy all the files in my WP content directory except those that I've excluded. And I'll add your host name. the remote path. This will vary for your server and I'm going to blank it out uh, here after. Now we're going to add our username. We are going to add our password, and then we're going to check the connection. That checked quickly. I am not going to remember that. That's simply one password trying to get me to remember things. So if you have not excluded files in your repository, you can now exclude them. So if you did not exclude your uploads directory, you could do it now. And if you're getting new directories from W3 Total Cache, you could make sure that they're excluded from your server. You can also run commands after your deployment. So you could use it to run an update script on your plugin or on your site. And you can also use webhooks. You could use that to update a status board on your site or to update anything in, that you'd like. You can also do, you can do it pre-deployment and post-deployment.
Now we've added our new server environment. But if and we can go to our deployments and you can see we have our new environment. It's ready to go. So we're, first thing we're going to do is a manual deployment. Since I know I'm just going to use the latest, this is my test deployment. And I'm going to start it. Now we wait for it to deploy. While we're waiting for it, I'm actually going to go to my development environment and I am going to add a plugin. So here I'm going to add, let's do WPDB backup. This plugin would back up your database. See that I now have new files in my plugins folder. And if I go to terminal and you see that I have new files. So again, I'm going to add this to my repository. And because I had my dev I was already on my development branch, my, de my deployment branch for my development, it's committed directly to that. But typically I'd actually commit to my development branch as I'm working on items and then I would merge them into my deployment branch and then I would push from there. Now that we have our files to update the new site, why don't we push them to Beanstalk again? So we're going to go get This time I'm only going to push the deployment branch for the development server. You can see our new one is in queue. It's now deploying. and it is deployed. So I go to my third tab, you can see I only have two plugins, and when I refresh, I now have WordPress database backup. That's how I use Beanstalk to deploy uh, code revisions to my site. Now obviously this does not deploy database revisions to your site, so your content you'd still have to sync up uh, manually. That's what I do at this point. Typically I keep test content in my development environment enough to be able to test the site and then I let the development site load up with all the content it needs during development and then I let the live site load up with all the content it needs for live. That's how I automate my deployment process and take out the dumb human user error with Beanstalk.